This is QD Video brought to you by RoomNow.Live, a great meeting to be held in Fort Worth. If you've never been to Fort Worth, it's one of those cities in the United States that truly has its own kind of special feel. It's kind of Texan, it's kind of cosmopolitan. It's got like 130 things to do from downtown at the Worthington Hotel. Check it out, RoomNow.Live. Today's case is an interesting one in that it's a 74-year-old a uh, woman who presents because she has a positive ANA and has aches and pains. The usual consult. I thought this was going to be an easy, you know, usual ANA consult. Turns out there's a little bit more to it than that. She has a history of some back pain, some head trauma. Um, she had an MI, an MI in cabbage a number of years ago. She's had a hip replacement. And she doesn't sleep all that great. Um, but it turns out that uh, about two months ago, she had bilateral aching in her shoulders and couldn't move them. And then while that got a little bit better uh, for Tylenol, um, it got worse again. And then she started complaining of a uh, pain in her hands. She went to her PCP. They gave her a Medrol dose pack. She did better. Her lab showed that she had a sed rate of 31. She was negative for rheumatoid factor and CCP but her ANA was positive at one to 1280 in a nuclear alert pattern. And that's like as high as they go. It was greater than one to 1280 in a nuclear alert pattern. Um, she had some wrist stiffness and swelling that lasted two weeks over the holidays. And now we're about two weeks later and she says her wrists are better. She has some aching here and, and pains here and there in her wrist, in her big, in her thumb, in a few fingers and sometimes her neck. She doesn't sleep all that well. She's got no history of rainouts. She has no history of renal disease. She has no dysphagia, no signs of crest or limited systemic sclerosis. She has no cutaneous features of telangiectasia or sclerodactyly. Uh, and she just has these aches and pains and a really high nuclear pattern ANA. So what's the deal? What do you do? You know, if this was a centromeric pattern in a high titer, you thought, well, maybe she could have something else. Maybe this is from thyroiditis. Um, maybe she has primary biliary cirrhosis. Maybe she's going to develop crest. Well, the exam is totally normal in her. Nail fold capillaroscopy is normal. Um, her skin findings are zero. She has a few DIPs suggestive of osteoarthritis. She has a CMC1 that's a little tender. But again, this is not a centromeric pattern. It's a nuclear pattern. We know that nuclear patterns are most commonly seen in patients with diffuse systemic sclerosis, again, the systemic variety, uh, and also seen in patients with lupus. After that, the list gets really small and really rare. I mean, it, I even looked this up and I really couldn't find a lot else going on. You know, sometimes hepatitis, sometimes cancer, uh, and no specific cancer has been associated with nuclear pattern ANAs. Um, patients who have atherosclerotic disease and coronary artery disease are thought to sometimes have nuclear pattern ANAs, and that's not associated with an antiphospholipid antibody. And oh yes, antiphospholipid antibodies will sometimes give you a nuclear pattern ANA. So I'm not treating the ANA. I did do some investigations. I ordered a smooth muscle antibody and a mitochondrial antibody. I ordered hep uh, hepatitis serologies. Um, I ordered something else. What did I order? TFTs. Well, I was at an anti an antiphospholipid panel with a RPR DRVVT for a lupus anticoagulant and anticardiolipin antibodies. Again, I think she will have nothing, but I think you're obligated to. Uh, when a red herring shows up, you have to decide whether it's worth pursuing or not. I think there's enough specificity to a nuclear pattern ANA and a high titer that. I'm obliged to do some workup and follow the patient. That's it for this case. Tune into more QD videos.